How to invest in real estate with no money. It's one of the hardest concepts to own in your heart. It took me years to believe that you didn't need money to invest in real estate. But once I got it, I got it. I learned my lesson by reading a book by Robert Allen called Nothing Down. But even after reading that book, it took years. But finally, I figured how to invest in real estate with no money. I'm Mitch Steven and I've bought and sold a house just about every four to five days in or about my hometown of San Antonio for over two decades. And I did a lot of it with none of my own money. As a matter of fact, I've done about 99.9% .9 of it with none of my own money. So we're going to be discussing today some of the ways to buy houses without your money. Imagine with your money, you can buy how many houses and with other people's money, how many houses can you buy? I would venture to say infinity. In this business, there is a hundred ways to deal with problems. The problem today we're talking about is how to buy properties when you don't have any money. And there's a lot of ways to do it. We can trade for things that we already have that we don't need anymore, or we can trade for future services or future debt, but there's a lot of ways to do it. So let's start with the first one, asking your seller to finance you. This is a great way to begin because it solves all the problems. Your seller can finance you typically if he has his house free and clear. When I see a seller who has a property free and clear, that's when I go for the juggler on the owner financing. I really, really want them to sell or finance me. In order to do that, I have to find out what they plan to do with the money they are looking forward to in the future from the sale of this property. Once I establish what they're going to do with the money, then there's a chance for me to uh, work my way in and make a seller financed offer that we can both live with. For example, I might say, this guy has a house free and clear. It's worth $100,000. I might ask him, what are you going to do with the money when you get it? He says, well, I need a car. I say, well, what kind of car are you going to get? And then I, I'm, what I'm shooting for is how much money do you need for a car? Certainly not a hundred thousand. I established that the seller only needs $20,000 for this car. So I come up with a plan with, how about I give you $20,000 and then you finance the remaining 80,000 for me at so much per month for so many years. And that's how you would work into a seller finance deal. That's just one way to do it. The other way to do it is just bring on partners. There's plenty of people out there that have the money, but don't have a deal. So when you have a deal, you just walk around town asking people who have money if they would like to participate. You know, it's really not that complicated. You have a deal, you, you've kind of mapped out what you think the house is worth and what you're buying it for and what the potential profit is. And then you go around asking people if they want a percentage of that profit for putting up the money. It's not really rocket science. Although it takes a little while to get used to calling on people and talking about this to even complete strangers sometimes, but it becomes normal. Then there's OPM or other people's money, really leaning towards the exact words private lenders, where you go to people that loan you money at an interest rate and they don't get part of your deal. Let's face it, if you're partnering with someone who takes 50% of your deal, that's pretty expensive money. Let's say your deal is going to take 90 days and it's going to make $40,000. And for that 90 days of using someone else's money, you have to pay $20,000 for that money because that's half of 40,000. So partners can be the most expensive money on the planet. It's much cheaper to find private lenders, which is another form of OPM or other people's money, but they just charge you an interest rate like 10% annually or 12% annually. When I started out, it was 18% annually. I didn't care though. 18% annually sounded very expensive and a lot of my friends and my family thought I was crazy, but I knew that I was only gonna have that house for 60 days. It was 18% annually and I only had to pay two months of that annual charge because I wasn't gonna own the house for over two months. So it's not always the cost of the money, it's the availability of the money that matters. You can pay 100% interest, annual interest on your money if, if you're only gonna have a house for two days and you only have to pay two days worth of the 100%. So keep in mind, how long are you gonna have the property before you start nixing an interest rate? Other creative ways to get in with none of your own money 
or no money out of your pocket is to trade for things you have that you don't need. Do you have a boat you don't need? Do you have a car you don't need? Do you have a lot somewhere you don't need? Do you have plane tickets you don't need? I don't know, whatever it is of value that you have, maybe you can throw that into the mix. And then last but not least, you can offer future services or future debt. Like, you know, I'll agree to mow your yard for the next 14 months if you'll give me this much credit towards the down payment of this house, or towards the purchase of this house. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. If you get creative, you might be surprised at what people will take. One thing is for sure, if you don't ask or you don't offer, there's absolutely no chance of getting a yes. It doesn't hurt to get to ask or to present an offer and get turned down. Just don't present it in such a fashion that it's one or done or this is my only offer and I'm not offering anything else. Always leave your back door open. Make your offer or present what you want to present. And if they say no, say, well, it was just an idea. Let me see if I can think of something else. Keep the door open. The day that I actually learned and owned the nothing down concept in my heart was when I did my first nothing down deal almost by accident. I had found a, a kid who inherited a fourplex in a very tough part of town. His father was a crusty old landlord and could handle things, but when his father passed and handed these properties down to his son, his son was ill-equipped to deal with it. Very sheltered, very naive, and it was bad. There was a guy in, living in this fourplex, a very bad, mean-looking, tattooed-up guy, who had appointed himself the rent collector for that property and was collecting the rent from all the units with no permission, no signed documents, no anything. He was just a thug. He looked like a thug. He acted like a thug and he did what thugs do. And he had this young man completely intimidated. To tell you the truth, when I saw him and saw this thug, uh, it, he was intimidating. There's no doubt about it. But I was raised a little different than this guy that was trying to sell this property. And uh, I decided I would go for this property and I would take on the property and this thug. I could get the property for $80,000. That was the whole fourplex. Mind you, this is like 20 years ago. I could get the entire fourplex for $80,000. It was $20,000 a unit. And the units were two bedroom, one bath. But they needed 30,000 in repairs. My first goal was to figure out how I was going to buy the property with no money. And then I would worry about the repairs later. So I started talking to the kid and he said at the time that he really wanted out of it. And I knew he wanted out of it. I said, look, I can buy the property from you, but I can't give you a down payment because I'm gonna have to take all the money I have and I'm gonna have to evict everybody, including the thug. And then when it finally gets vacant, or if they finally leave, when they finally leave, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to fix it all up. I'm gonna have $30,000 in repairs alone, so I can't give you a down payment, but I can improve your collateral, which would be uh, your recourse for the loan. And he agreed to finance me the house with no money down. Then I also told him, I was going to have to borrow that money to fix up his collateral so that so I couldn't make payments for a year. It was going to take me a year to fix the house up and I couldn't be making payments while I was spending money on his property on his collateral. And he agreed to that much to my surprise. So we got it all signed up and I didn't have $30,000 to do the repairs, but I did have good credit and I did have a lot of credit cards in my wallet that I didn't have any balances on. So I went and borrowed $30,000 on my credit cards. Because I didn't have any payments on the credit cards and I didn't have any payments to him, I could work on the property in peace for the next month. And while I was working on them, I was also simultaneously running advertisements to lease them. So I was working on them and trying to pre-lease them at the same time. As luck would have it, I had pre-leased all the units before I had finished working on them. And it only took me about 30 days to finish because I was scared. I knew there was a clock ticking. I knew I owed money. This whole thing had lined up in my favor, but there was a lot of things I had to do to make it work. By the time I finished preparing the units and spending the 30,000 on the credit cards, I had, you know, on the credit cards, I had 0% interest and no payments for six months or eight months or 12 months. I didn't have to even worry about the payments on the cards yet. And then I went about leasing out that fourplex to the 
to the people I had pre-leased to. I was collecting $800 a unit, so it was like $3,200 a month. And I didn't have payments for another 11 months. So I was collecting well over the 30,000 I owed in credit cards and rents. And so as the rent would come in, I would throw it at my credit cards. And within about 10 months, I had all the credit cards paid off. I got to collect one month for myself, which was $3,200. And then my payments started kicking into my buyer. It was a classic nothing down deal where the seller financed me and because I couldn't make payments, I asked to not have payments, and lo and behold, he said yes. The secret to that negotiation was, and I learned it from a book called Nothing Down by Robert Allen. I just had to ask for what I needed, no matter how outlandish it was or whatever. I couldn't get this house unless they gave me what I needed. And if I needed no year with payments, then that's what I needed. I asked for it. I didn't really expect anyone to say yes to it, but they did. And that became my first Nothing Down deal. After that, I was hell on wheels. I had done a nothing down deal. I had seen firsthand that people will say yes, even to the craziest offers. And I was a man possessed and I was out there. I think in my first year of full time, I did 45 houses on my own. And I did it all with no money because I didn't have any money. If that story about my first nothing down deal interested you, then there's a whole bunch of stories in my first book just like that. It's called My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom. And it's a lot of different stories about how I learned to morph and to remorph and to remorph again into situations and into a kind of person that could become successful in this industry. Check it out. My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom. All you have to do is go in the description down here below and click on the link and click on the free book offer. Now, all I ask is that you pay shipping and handling, and I think it's like $7, and I'll get you this hard copy straight to your door. Because you're ordering it direct, it'll come autographed. So check it out. Go to 1000houses.com too, in my website. You can also find a place to get the free book offer. Just pay $7 shipping and handling. Thank you.